its prerequisite to understanding oblique triangle trigonometry. We will review the whole thing about right triangle trigonometry. First is, uh, you should understand what is the meaning of a solved triangle. Okay, a solved triangle is when your three sides and three angles are known. So let's say we know already this is 90 degrees. Let's say I have uh, 43 degrees in here. So this is 90, and we know that the interior angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. All we have to do is to subtract this, uh, this angle from 90, and it, it will give us 47 degrees. All right? Now, the reason why I just subtracted from 90, because 180 minus 90 is already like 90. And there is a theorem which says that uh, the non-right angle of any right triangle will always have a sum of 90 degrees and they are supposed to be complementary. Another is, if I have here 17, I have here 15, all right? And I would like to find out the measure of the third side. I can make use of the Pythagorean theorem. So this is your C, this is your B, and this is your A. So if you try to find A, you will have to take the square root of C squared minus B squared. When you're solving for C, you add the squares of A and B. But if you're trying to solve A or B, you will subtract uh, from, from C square and take the square root, like what you see. So it means that if I have P, I will do the square root of C square minus A square. So all you have to do now is to uh, square 17 and then square 15 and then subtract. So you will have the square root of 289 minus 225 will give us the square root of 64. And that gives us 8. Since we know already that A is 8, B is 15, C is 17, and we know that uh, one of the angles is 43, the second is 47, and you have a 90 degrees. All the three sides and angles are known, it means that this is an example of a solved triangle. All right. Now, this would be something like you are familiar with, the Sokatoa thing. And what's the meaning of this? So we have the three basic functions, sine, abbreviation is sin, and then cosine, abbreviation is cos, and tangent, abbreviation is tan. All right, so you, you need to slash it here. It means this two, this actually belongs together, and then this one too, and this one too. So what you do here is the O refers to the opposite side, and then H refers to the hypotenuse, and then A refers to the adjacent, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. That's the reason why sine is equivalent to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equivalent to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is equivalent to opposite over adjacent. Now, if you see this symbol, it means an angle. So there is an angle uh, that's always attached to a certain function. This cannot stand by itself. There should, there should be an angle beside it in order for it to be functional. All right, I'm going to give uh, three possible examples that you will solve in order to solve right triangles. So let's say you have this right triangle here. You can only solve a right triangle if, it's, if three of its dimensions are given. So what are the three dimensions given here? You have the hypotenuse, which is 17. You have angle 48 degrees. And this is always 90 degrees, although it is not indicated. Now this is our reference angle. Okay, reference angle means uh, where you will define your opposite, your adjacent, and the hypotenuse. Opposite from the word itself, it's going to be in front of that angle, so this is your opposite. Okay, adjacent is from the word itself, again, it's attached to the angle, so this will be your adjacent. All the hypotenuse is always attached to a given angle, alright, except of course from the 90 degrees angle. All right, the hypotenuse remains to be the hypotenuse because it's always the longest side of your right triangle. 
So we can now solve for the opposite side. Let's say I'm going to name this as triangle ABC. Okay, and we know already that measure of angle A is 48. Uh, we have AB equals 17. Now let's try to solve BC. Okay, so BC is the opposite side. And uh, you have the hypotenuse. So you cannot solve uh, BC in terms of the adjacent because it's already it's also unknown. If you have an equation and it's in one variable, there should only be one missing in that equation. So we will base it from opposite and hypotenuse and Sokotoa, all right, means that uh, we need to make use of the sine function, all right? So that would be sine A is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So meaning sine A is equivalent to the opposite, which we don't know, over the hypotenuse, which is 17. We know that if if a, a value doesn't have a denominator, it's 1. And I will always advise you that whenever you have a fraction on the left side and another fraction on the right side, you can cross-multiply to solve, and then you remove the fraction. So you have 1 times x is x is equal to 17 sine, and we know that a is equivalent to 48 degrees. Okay, so we will find this value using our Desmos calculator. I'll split the screen so that you can see clearly both of the possibilities. All right. So first is you, mean you need to make sure that this is in the degree mode. And you wanted to find the value of x, which is 17 times sine function sine. Not the inverse functions because we're not finding an angle here. The angle is already given. We're finding a sine. So sine and the angle is 48. And that means that our x value is equivalent to 12.63. We can place it here. Okay. Now we will try to find a c. It's either you make use of another trigonometric functions. So a over c is... Uh, equivalent to uh, a over h is equivalent to making use of the cosine function or you can make use of the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to show you both. So let's say for example I'm going to make use of cosine instead. So cosine 48 degrees is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Adjacent is unknown and the hypotenuse is 17. So our a now is equivalent to since this is over 1 cross multiply 17 cosine 48 degrees. Okay, let's find out its value. That's 17. 17 cosine 48. Okay, and you would see that the value is is 11.38. Okay, now let's say, for example, uh, you want to make use of the Pythagorean theorem instead. And we know already that if we're finding A, Okay, we need to subtract from the hypotenuse, which is 17, minus the given side 12.63 squared. So to do that, in our decimus calculator, you have uh, the square root of 17 squared minus uh, 12.63 squared. You would see that the values are... Uh, Almost uh, similar is because uh, the first the first equation is uh, giving you the exact value and the second equation gives you the approximated value. Nevertheless, uh, the values would be typically the same. So this will also give us like around 11.38. Now, all we have to do is to find the angle B. And we know already that to find angle B, we simply subtract from... 90 degrees and it means that it will be equivalent to 42 degrees so you know the three sides 17 12.63 and then 11.38 and you know the angles 42 48 and 90 so this is already a solved triangle given that you have an angle and the hypotenuse is given okay now let's say you have this triangle okay so let's say i'm going to name it as def 
All right. So with respect to this angle, 17 is our opposite. This remains to be the hypotenuse, and this remains to be the adjacent. So it's either we find A and H, but we can already find that the measure of D is 40 degrees because 40 plus 50 is 90. And we know already that this is 90, and the sum of these measures is 180 degrees. So all we need to do is to find A and H. Okay? So let's try to find A first. So if you have A, now it's up to you whether you, it's A or H. Let's say, for example, you have A. You cannot solve it in, in terms of H because H is also unknown. So what you can just do is to base it from the opposite, which is equivalent to 17. So from Sokotoa, okay, the given values are opposite and adjacent. We will make use of tangent. So you have tangent, 50 degrees, is equal to the opposite, which is 17, over A. So I told you if it doesn't have a denominator, it's 1. So you cross multiply. That's a tangent 50 is equal to 17. But because we're solving a, we need to get rid of tangent 50. So we will divide by tangent 50 is equal to 17 over tangent 50. So all we need to do is to use our calculator to find the value. So that would be 17 divided by tangent 50. And it gives us 14.26. Okay, so again, uh, the, one, the thing that's left for us to do is to find our H in terms of O. So you have opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So that will be sine 50 degrees is equal to opposite. 17 over H. Now, by this time, you, have, you will notice that if the denominator is unknown, you will have to divide. If the, if the uh, numerator is unknown, you will have to multiply. But nevertheless, I'm going to show you still the whole solution. So this will be H sine 50 is equal to 17. This is over 1. Therefore, our H is 17 over sine 50. Okay, so all we have to do is to use our uh, Desmos graphing calculator, 17, divided by tangent 50. And that gives us 1420, oh, sorry, it's tangent. It's, we use cosine or sine, sine 50, and that gives us 22.19. So H is 22.19. You can also make use of the Pythagorean theorem. So we're solving, we're solving for H, and it's the hypotenuse we need to add. All right, so A squared is 14.26 squared plus 17 squared. Let's see if we would be able to get the same answer. So square root of... Square root of... 14.26 square plus 17 square. And you would see that they are basically the same just uh, because it's rounded off so you cannot uh, get the exact value but with still it's 22.19. So you know already the sides 14.26, uh, 22.19 and 17. And the angles are 50, 40, and 90. So this is an example of a solved triangle. So this will be the last one. Now let's say you have this triangle and no angles are given. But of course, we have three dimensions of the triangle given. Okay, the two sides and the angle, which is 90 degrees. So let's say I'm going to name this as triangle XYZ. Okay. Now, it's up to you to decide whether you'd like X to be a reference angle or your Y to be a reference angle. But first is we can actually uh, solve this side already, if you want, uh, by using the Pythagorean theorem. Because we're, so we're solving not the hypotenuse, but one of the sides, we can actually take the square root of the difference. Okay, so you have uh, 17 squared minus 15 squared because we're doing the shorter side. So all you have to do is to go to our calculator and find 
17 square minus 15 square. And it gives us 8. Okay? But uh, let's say, for example, I'm trying to uh, make use of x as our reference angle. So which means that 15 is our opposite. 17 is the hypotenuse. 8 is the adjacent. All right. When three sides are known in a triangle, it doesn't matter really uh, what function you would like to make use. I'm going to show you that the answer would still be the same. So let's say I make use of sine x. And sine x is opposite over hypotenuse, which is equivalent to uh, 15 over 17. And then I would also make use of tangent x which is opposite over adjacent, and that's 15 over 8. And then maybe you would like to make use of cosine, and that's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is equivalent to 8 over 17. Since we're trying to find an angle, this means that we will make use of the inverse function of sine. So x will be equivalent to sine raised to negative 1, 15 over 17. Okay, x here is equivalent to shift tangent, 15 over 8. And then x here is equivalent to shift cosine, 8 over 17. Okay, now, uh, I'm trying to find an angle and make use of the inverse function. Let's go ahead and do first shift sine, okay? So you'd see the 3. So shift sine, and that's 15 over 17. And the angle is equivalent to 61.93 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to make use of tangent because so we, we actually think differently. Maybe uh, some of you will make use of sine, some of you will make use of cosine. So I will make use of tangent. And it's equivalent to 15 divided by 8. You would notice that the angle would also be 61.93. Okay? Maybe uh, Alexis will make use of cosine. So I'm going to make use of shift cosine. And I will uh, have to make use of 8 divided by 17. And you would see that the angles will be the same. So when the three sides are given as long as you ref you you rightly reference your side sides to the angle you will always get the same answer so the measure of x here is 61.93 degrees and all we have to do is to subtract from 90 to get the value of angle y so measure of angle y is equal to 90 minus 61.93 so we will subtract whatever from 90 degrees. And that's the value of our y, which is equivalent to 28.07 degrees. So there you have it, the three possibilities of solving a right triangle. If uh, uh, whether you will divide if an angle is given, it means, it means that the denominator for the equation you will form is unknown you will multiply if the numerator of the equation of, of the unknown is is uh, is uh, unknown and of course uh, you will have to make use of inverse functions if the sides are given instead and if the sides are are given all of the three sides you can make use of any trigonometric function you like whatever your favorite is uh, me personally my favorite is tangent Okay, that's it.